Wagwan viewers and subs, welcome to Mario's Paint Class. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to take care of a dieback problem while teaching you how to do a flow coat. So let's see what we got going on. Here is our hood that we're having the dieback problem on. If you look very closely, you can see that it's very dull, very dry, and very peely. Now, this was a brand new hood. It got sealer, got paint, pearl, and clear. Now, somewhere along the line, I might have not mixed my materials properly or there wasn't sufficient flash time in between coats. So let's fix it. To fix this dieback problem, orange peel problem, dirt problem, we're gonna do a flow coat. A flow coat, you're gonna send the panel exactly how you would do for a blend. Meaning, you don't want any burn through at all. If you burn through it, then it's no longer a flow coat. Flow coat basically means clear on top of clear. So you paint the car today and you cleared it today. You wait until tomorrow or after the panel is dry. And then tomorrow you can put your fresh clear over that clear that's already there. But that requires you to sand it first. Here's a quick tip guys, when doing big panels, I like to section my work because I don't want to get overwhelmed. So I use the air blower to blow off all the dust of this area that I already sanded. This way, I can see if I missed anything, any dirt nibs or any peels that needed to be sanded. For example, here's a big chunk of dirt. If I go ahead and clear right over that, it's gonna still be there. So you wanna double check what you're doing at all time. It's very easy to miss something, especially on white. Alright guys, so I already sent this whole panel with 600, now I have some 800 grit scuff pad and I'm just going to use it to scuff all the edges. Not going overboard, just a gentle scuff. Now once I'm done scuffing, get some 800 sandpaper and my soft pad. Put the soft pad on here, put my 800 and I'm ready to roll. And just like that, we're all done with the prepping. So we started with the 600 to cut out the dirt nibs and the orange peel. And then we use the scuff pad to get all the edges to make sure that we don't get any burn through. And then we went over it and refined the 600 scratches with 800 on a soft pad. So now all we gotta do is clean this up and get it in the booth and start getting ready for some clear. All right guys, so here we are in the booth. We sand down the car, we mask it up. Now we're gonna give it one more clean. I'm gonna use the water-based cleaner and then after that, I use the solvent-based And what I'm gonna be using is some microfiber towels. I kid you not, these are the best thing to clean your panels with before painting. So 
use one side to wipe and then flip it over and use the other side to dry. So I got my clear ready and before I go ahead and start laying down the gloss, you know, because I got the sauce, just got to make sure I give it a tack. I lay down my first coat I'm about to put my second and final coat on here now the DV1 1.3 tip is working really good I had it at 17 psi and then I switched it up to 19 but now I'm gonna put it back to 17 because 17 the lower it seems like it has a sweet spot around there so let's get it And just like that, the dieback problem has been eliminated. Now guys, I could have gone the route of Buffett, but just think about how much time and material you would waste, especially the sandpaper. 2000 is very expensive. All that material you would take to cut about 30 to 50% of the clear coat on there, which means in a few years, it'll start to die back and look pinch again. Whereas the flow coat just added a longer life, a longer UV protection to the panel. So this is why flow code is always better. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching the video. If this video was helpful to you, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. Let me know what you do when you have problems like these. So until next time guys, I'll see you on the next one.